When you're choosing cinema lenses for a project, there is always one big decision to make early on, no matter the budget that you're working with. You can either opt for modern cinema lenses designed to be as optically perfect as possible, or you can seek out something with some artistic character, accepting that this is normally going to bring with it some optical imperfections. And lenses that fit those two descriptions exist at all price point levels, so it really is one of the first decisions that many people are faced with. Going down the modern lenses route is fairly straightforward. There are fantastic choices available with entry-level options like Samyang VDSLRs, Zines or the DZO Vespid lenses. There's then a huge selection of excellent mid-range options like Zeiss CP3s, Sigma Cines, Canon CNEs, Tekina lenses. There's then a huge amount of choice at the higher end as well from brands like Ari and Zeiss. Finding an option amongst all of that for your production should be fairly straightforward. However, if you're looking for something with more character perhaps, things get much more challenging. And up at the high end you have brands like Cook and Leica who have been doing fantastic things for many years. There's also some high end vintage lenses like Canon's K35s for example, which look stunning but they're really in demand and command a high, high price tag as a result. There are of course lots of other vintage lenses that get rehoused or even just used as is and these can be great fun. This for example is my copy of a Helios 44-2 for example. But the trouble with lenses like this is that they're very inconsistent. Even if you get a professionally rehoused version or if you find a lens which is in perfect condition, getting a true matched set just doesn't exist. And of course, that's a hugely important factor in choosing cinema primes. You don't want the look and the feel of your production changing between different focal lengths. So in that mid-range of cinema primes, there was a real hole in the market for a long time actually, for some modern cinema lenses with all the ease and the convenience that that brings, but that meets the demand for a more artistic, imperfect, but characterful look. But in the last year or so, we've seen more and more options hit the market to fill that need. And I have some of my favourites. Here, we've got the Atlas Orion anamorphic lenses, and these are the new silver edition. The Sigma Classics, and then the Canon Sumire's. And I think these three lens ranges actually do a really good job of showing just how different each manufacturer's approaches can be to this challenge that they're faced with. We have Canon with a whole new optical design in the Sumire's, while then we have Atlas and Sigma who are taking existing lens ranges and then tweaking the coatings actually to give you a very, very different look. We're going to do a video looking more in depth at our lens tests with each of these lenses very soon, but for now I really just want to look at a bit of a bigger picture view at the approach that each manufacturer has taken and try and show the results of that to you. I'm actually going to reference the website for each manufacturer quite a bit as well, which is something we don't normally do, but I find it's a really good way of identifying what the intention was for the manufacturer behind each decision that they made. First, let's start with the Atlas Orion Silver Edition Anamorphics. I'm actually being filmed with the 40mm right now on the C300 Mark III, which is why this whole video is going to be in 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio. If you haven't heard of Atlas yet, they're a relatively new brand actually in the cinema lenses space, specialising in anamorphic options. Their fantastic Orion lenses already fit exactly into this corner of the market, a modern lens commercially available, but with the classic anamorphic look. Now these new silver editions take that anamorphic recipe with the exact same construction and nearly the same optical design, but they replace the coatings. And this makes them flare much more than the originals, but with a very neutral flare, rather than the classic blue streak anamorphic look that the regular Orions have. And in my opinion, these neutral flares with that long anamorphic thin flare look stunning. They really set these lenses apart from the crowd. It takes on the colour of whatever light source is flaring, so the flares themselves are going to be warm or cold depending on the scene. 
or in a nightclub with RGB lights everywhere, for example, they're going to be all over the place and really feel like an extension of the lighting, which I really like. If we look at their website, we can see that this neutral flare is the main change they've made, but they also claim to have optimize the air spacings between lens elements in order to provide a different focus fall off characteristic, which is interesting. But to me, these lenses are all about these beautiful neutral flares. Aside from that, all the regular anamorphic characteristics are here, oval bokeh and distortion, those long thin flares rather than round ones, and the wider aspect ratio, of course. These are two times anamorphic lenses, so really, you want a camera which can give a 4x3 or a 1x1 aspect ratio, like this Kinefinity Mavo Edge here. With a 16x9 sensor, like the C300 Mark III, which we're using for these tests in this video, you'll actually get a very thin image, and will most likely want to crop into the image in order to get back to the regular 2.35 to 1 like we have done here. To me, these Silver Edition Orions sum up this new breed of lenses perfectly. They're a modern and a convenient lens, and yet technically, they're not perfect, not at all. They're definitely the softest lenses on these tables, and they have definite chromatic aberration and breathing, but there's just something about them which makes them look really beautiful in my opinion. Now let's move on to the Sigma Classic lenses, as Sigma had a very similar approach to Atlas. They took their existing Cinema Prime lenses, which are already some of my favourite, the clean, modern spherical lenses, and some of my favourites in their price range, and then they changed the coatings on them to give them a more vintage look. Now these aren't completely uncoated, but they say they have incorporated more non-coated optical elements to achieve unrivaled expression, and that they retain the high resolution capability that Sigma Cine lenses are well known for, and offer a unique combination of low contrast and artistic flaring and ghosting in the image. Now this is the main change, and it's a big departure from the originals. These lenses flare like you wouldn't believe. My first reaction to this was that it was far too much, to be honest, and that it dominated the image a little bit. But the more I thought about it, I realised that that's not really what these new breed of lenses is all about. This is about artistic expression and offering different brushes for different styles of work. And if you have a project where you want a lot of flaring, these lenses are going to be a perfect brush to choose. And apart from that pronounced flaring, these are very similar to the original Cinema Primes, just with a lower overall contrast. Which is a great thing. I mean, these are very sharp and detailed lenses, with beautiful out of focus rendition. They are a stop darker than the originals though, at T2.5 rather than T1.5. Now the look is the same, with the same amount of out of focus area in the bokeh, but the lack of coatings mean that the lenses simply transmit less light than the originals. Then we come to the Sumire lenses from Canon. These take a completely different approach from the others. These aren't just a tweak of an existing lens design, despite physically looking quite similar to Canon c and &E primes. These are completely different from the ground up, with a more subtly artistic look than these other two lenses. And this is reflected in what Canon say on their website, subtle, cinematic and expressive, yet beautifully refined. Designed to offer delicate and subtle rendering of a subject with a crafted focus bokeh aimed at careful, creative expression. Now, this is not a very specific description of the lens's character, but to be fair on Canon, these lenses are quite tricky to describe. If we look at our tests, you can see that they are nice, clean, modern lenses, not as detailed as some others, but with some minimal flaring and breathing like you would expect from other modern lenses. But where the artistic side of things comes in is in the outer focus areas. If you look at the fairy lights behind George here, they change dramatically across the frame. It's almost as if the centre and the edges are at two different aperture values, with a different depth of field because of it. 
the bokeh then becomes more oval shaped as it nears the edge, which gives the lenses an almost swirly look to them. This is very similar to old vintage lenses, and Canon often refer back to their popular old K35 lenses when they're talking about these new Sumires. Personally, I think this is a really lovely look. It's subtle, sure, but it really helps draw the audience's eye and makes your subjects pop out from the frame. I want to just draw attention to this frame here from the film on Canon's website, which shows what I mean really well. It's a beautiful shot, and at first glance, nothing stands out as different or overly arty about it. But when you look closely at the outer focus trees, which all look like they're a similar distance away from the camera, the ones in the center of the frame are much softer than the ones at the edge of the frame. And this really helps draw your eye to the subject, the couple walking towards the sunset while still giving you a sense of the environment around them, which you get from the edges of the frame where you can see the trees more clearly. It's a very unique look, and it's one that I personally really enjoy. But what makes this new breed of modern lenses with character so exciting is how different they all are. We're now seeing lens manufacturers being creative with different optical designs, rather than simply trying to create the best lens possible with the fastest aperture. Each of these lenses has its own look and its own style. And sure, they won't work for every project, not at all. But in the right situation, and with the right artist behind them, each of these lenses will really help you craft a look and a feel to a piece of work. If you have any questions about any of the lenses mentioned, leave a comment down below. And of course, if you want to buy them for yourself, head over to prov.co.uk or talk to the Prov sales team. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.